In this video, I'll show how we can build a very simple chorus effect in Reactor using only a few basic primary modules. And when we're done, I'll give you a quick sound sample. So to begin with, I'm going to add a single delay module. And we're going to use a couple of single delay modules to give us a few different copies of the incoming sound that are going to be delayed at slightly different times, so we'll have two slightly different copies of the same incoming wave. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a simple LFO that we're going to use to control the delay time of the delay module. And modulating the delay time of a delay module will have an effect of giving us a pitch shift. And we're only going to modulate it by a little bit, so it's going to be a very slight pitch shift. So we're going to basically have these two copies of our incoming signal be slightly pitch shift apart from each other and added back together. And it's going to give us a altogether effect of just kind of fattening up the sound. Alright, so you've probably noticed that instead of using the built-in LFO module, I've opted to use the sine oscillator as our LFO. And the reason that I've done that is that the built-in LFO operates at event rate, which is often fine, but we're going to be modulating the delay time of our incoming signal. I just like to have a really smooth waveform to do that with, and it's easiest to do that with a audio rate signal. So we're just going to choose to run the sine oscillators at a very low pitch in order to get the speed that we want. Okay, so each delay line wants to be modulated at a slightly different rate than the other. So we're going to need two LFOs, so I'm going to duplicate the sine oscillator structure that we have. And I'm just going to rename all the knobs so that we can tell them apart. So since the sine oscillators are currently outputting a value between negative 1 and 1, and we can't really use a negative value for the input to the delay time, because having a negative delay time doesn't really make any sense. We're going to need to do a little bit of math before we use these oscillators to control the delay time. Another problem we'll have right now is that if we just use these simple sine oscillators to modulate the delay time, we're going to end up with a pretty boring effect. So what I'm going to do to combat the boring effect problem is I'm going to add an inverted version of each sine wave to its counterpart, like so. And this is going to help us have a more interesting modulation effect going on. And finally we're going to add 2 to that value. And the reason we're going to do that is because, again, we need to keep the overall delay time at zero or above. And the minimum value that these two sine waves added together are going to have is negative two. So this will just help keep our delay time positive no matter what's going on. So then we can use this value to control one of our delay lines and simply duplicate the whole structure for our other sine oscillator and use that to control our other delay line. Okay, so we're almost done here. All we need to do is add together the outputs of our two delay lines. And to kind of keep it at the same volume as it was before, we're going to multiply that by 0.5. And 
Then on effects like this, I really like to add a depth option to give the user a little bit more control over the sound. And it's pretty easy to do. We can just use a crossfade module and we can feed the dry signal into the zero input of the crossfader and the wet signal into the one input and simply use the create control function to give us a fader which I like to uh, change into a knob and we can rename it depth Alright, so that's pretty much it for this macro. Let's just connect the output of the crossfader to the output of the macro. And then on the larger instrument scale, I've created a very basic sawtooth oscillator here. And we can connect the chorus macro to the output. And I'm selecting everything to be mono for now, just to keep it simple, but you could use the same structure in a poly device very easily. Now let's take a moment to rearrange the panel. And when I edited this knob I accidentally left it to have a step size that's equal to its maximum value, so it's kind of useless. Let's just change that really quick. Alright, so everything appears to be in working order. Let's do a quick sound check. Completely dry signal first. And then turning up the depth. Alright, so as you can hear, the chorus effect is a great way to add some evolution to a static signal and to fatten up a pretty boring tone. And this is, of course, a very basic chorus effect, but it does achieve pretty similar results to what you can get out of the factory chorus macros that come with Reactor. And it takes up slightly less CPU. And some ways you could make it a little more interesting, you could maybe add tempo sync to the LFOs and maybe add some extra delay lines if you wanted to have some more signals going on. But I find it to be pretty useful just as it is.